address a couple of ideas that are, are important. But the, I, I pretty much what I want to tell you in the text here is the purpose of tonight is to hear from you, not for you to hear from us, we've done that in some of our other board meetings, and we'll do that in some of our community forums. But this is an opportunity to hear what is the school community looking for as we develop our budget for next year and the year after. We don't just do one budget, we try to look down the road as well. But there's three topics that we have right here. Uh, curriculum and instruction, capital improvements, and revenue and expenditures. And we're not here to tell you about curriculum and instruction. We're not here to tell you about capital projects or revenue and expenditure. Lynn, you want to jump over here? What, we're, what we really are hoping for, if you look under the text that's under curriculum instruction, is we've made some improvements. Sorry. And our goal is always to provide the best education for our kids because that's what public education is about, it's equity. What else should we be considering in terms of curriculum instruction as we move forward, understanding what our little is guys? are most likely walking into careers that don't have a name, that don't know what they're going to be doing, and that they're probably going to have up to nine different careers, new jobs or careers. Under capital improvement, in August we'll be done with the $22 million capital project. Um, we have started some tours, we will do more tours on that. Those, that $22 million, after not having a big project for a long time, really represented about a third of the needs or wants that came from community forums like this in 2014, where over 100 people were involved. Clearly those haven't gone away five years later. And so the question is, is well, as we look forward to doing another capital project, do we believe that the community will support one? What is it that we need to be telling them or sharing with them so they can make a decision? And the reason I bring that up is because capital projects by the state of New York are automated and work and share what you as I figured would be when we would go out for one, as opposed to us putting something through the general budget, which would be not aided at all and it would come out of our general funds in 100 percent And then finally on revenue and expenditure. Politically there's changes in New York State, there's changes that have happened in the federal government as far as the United States Education Department. And considering what's happening politically, you've got a sheet that will show you some trends. Laura can talk to that a little bit later on too as she rolls around on the different tables, what do you think is going to happen in terms of public education, either federally, state, or county, or local, in the next couple of years? And if you suspect that our revenue sources will be decreased, which we already think they will, because we are heavily funded through Senator Gallagher's bill and he's not majority anymore, then how do we start pushing aside some initiatives and some priorities so that we can balance the budget? Because we don't have a credit card and we can't spend more than the voters approve. So that's our challenge in the next 25 minutes. You don't have to get all three of them, but I would ask you to really delve into some conversation as school members, as community members, as parents, whatever role or multiple roles you're playing, just so that we have a sense as a school member. Fair enough? Everything good? Okay. You're off. And Laura will come around on question three. Dave will come around on question two. Where do you come? Um, one day to get back with around question two, he's over here, and Warren, Kelly, Mark are curriculum people so they can talk to it um, just equally at whatever table they land at.
in our, in our community and Sean that's a lot of that, that kudos to you and your staff. But they also are, I don't know, and, and I didn't get a full understanding of it, but to a certain extent, extent a, uh, a profit center in that they bring, bring a revenue generator so that some of the things that could grow in, in special ed could possibly be at least partially in, in over and above state aid, but, but paid, paid from other districts to be. So in other words, we charge tuition to other districts to send their children here. Okay, so we spent a lot of time on that. Um, uh, but uh, Mark that's was, also the needs for uh, maybe more um, special ed teachers. Um, well, and then we moved into the RTI, RTI, the RTI, RTI. Because what's missing is the middle of the road comparison. Because we have our children, especially the young ones, who are coming in with the needs. And they're not quite special ed, but it's a point where they need that extra support. And we can't provide it anymore because the staffing has decreased for the numbers of children that have increased. And so we're limited being able to provide that. So these kids are kind of squeaking by, hanging in as best they can, and then eventually they get to a level where now they need special ed So, so if I can just come back and drill into that one. The so we were in a declining enrollment at the elementary school for a while. And, and the school responded to that by cutting back its staff. Now we're in the opposite, where our numbers are increasing. But we have not increased that support staff that you're talking about, right? Correct. But we were also talking about the high emotional needs as they're going through up into the high school and perhaps the need for um, a health health teacher to work with uh, you know, like a health and wellness health and wellness to be going into these classrooms and really working with the kids because they're facing with so many things that we can even imagine being faced with just so that's an, an, another issue that's sort of all related right. one more yeah but we talked about the improvements last time go ahead no, and uh, we talked about it. Lauren brought up the, the fact that you know, going through a lot of these smaller districts that they, they tend to do capital project after capital project after capital project. They just keep on building and, and, uh, and, and continuing the growth. The mentality in Eden, being a longtime resident, is you go, to the, you go to Four Corners and you sit there and somebody will say, why are they talking about another one? We just got done with one. So what, what needs to be done is a changing of the mentality from we do them when we need them to a continual improvement type of thing. And, and from my perspective being, and I've gone through a lot of budgets, a lot of budget talks, and a lot of pieces in that, we need to do, we need to do a better job marketing to the, the people. On, and uh, just, I, I feel bad for you to say, well, we go out and do that. We go out and talk to them. We can't get them. Look at the people that are here. We could, we could have problems with it, and it hasn't worked real well. We need to, to find ways to address it, yeah. find ways to, to work through uh, you know, social media and, and all those things. Try to be, be proactive in deciding where the problems are going to come from and go out and diffuse them before they happen. And then, this is a good start, this is a good piece of it. It needs to, it just, from my perspective, it needs to be you know, a, a full court press to get, to get the word out, to get the, the word in, to get the understanding in like you're doing here. And, and that to uh, to itself. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Can I put that in there? Yeah. Um, okay. So as you brought up about um, health and wellness and social emotional wellness, I was listening to your conversation, but it piggybacks to our professional development and the needs in our professional development. Because a class is wonderful, but state regulation is every teacher is supposed to be teaching wellness, social emotional wellness, pre-K through 12, no matter what you teach, and intensive professional development is needed in that area on top of next generation ELA, next generation math, new science, new social, um, personalized learning, like we have a huge need for professional development. So at your table, you have a spokesperson here? Uh, you have some rough notes. We had five topics we talked about, technology, and I guess you guys have a lot of technology that you're going to have to have funds for coming up just to keep up with the technology that's coming. So it's no the replacement what. of what we got right. from Smart School Bar. And then uh, talked about uh, capital projects and uh, some of your uh, stumbling blocks like historical requirements and asbestos and various things and boilers or elevators and roofing that you're going to have to deal with. And uh, then Buses came in at the very end, and uh, you know I understand. You know you had no buses, 
you almost had to rent buses a few years ago, and then you're going to possibly lease them, and then you end up with nothing, so at least you're buying them now. And then uh, the, the reserves was talked about, and pretty much, you know, we're looking at, well, I guess you guys want to have your reserves at a certain number, and you're at a certain number now, and to get to that number is a lot of money and doesn't have to be there. How are you going to get there? You guys got your hands full on how you're going to do all this, and there's wants and needs, and, uh, you know. And yet be respectful of the fact that there's declining. That we have a, we have a, 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 an aging population in Eden on a fixed budget. We get that. Right. We get that. And at the same time, I mean, something that I learned just the other day is that when you have a population in a community that is mostly retired, Lord's Laura, help me here. They're not filling out. You gave me the aha moment. Because part of our I kept saying, why are we keep why do we keep getting listed as an affluent community? I can't figure this out. On a scale of one to ten, we're a six. Yeah, we think we're probably a four, okay? And the difference is when people retire and they no longer are ha having any withholdings from their social security and they're below the deductibles and the exemptions to so that, in essence, they get nothing back by filing because they paid nothing in. They get nothing back. They simply, generally, stop filing taxes because all they're getting is their Social Security. When they come off the radar screen, they now come off of our percentages where the state pulls it from. Because it's mm -hmm. considered a wealth index. Mm -hmm. Don't forget, you have families too. So if you're losing taxes, how are they going to be able to afford it? Besides the senior people. Yep. Right. Well, no. The point of it is, is that is that those reporting taxes is not 100% of people paying school tax. And so so it looks like we're more affluent than we are. Therefore, we get less state aid than we think we should get. On top of that, too, Sean deals with this every single year, is we probably have a couple hundred parents who easily could fill out free and reduce lunch that would help us with our state aid that won't do it. For pride reasons, for whatever the reasons, they just won't do it. Therefore, we don't get the state aid we want. You can go down to Cherry Creek, any of those, where they're looking at percentages of free and reduced poverty rates over 30%. They qualify for millions of dollars of, of, of grants every year that we can't qualify for because we're considered to be more affluent, but yet we know we're not. Sandy, just, just tagging along on your, on your comment about seniors, and, and that I've, I've seen some statistics, and I'm going to be wrong on it, but, but the idea is right. There are horrible number of senior households in Eden that are, that are living on less than twelve thousand yep. dollars a year. Yep. We know that too. And, and there's yep. another grouping, you know, under fifteen and under eighteen thousand dollars. Yep. Can you imagine living up living up with that little and having and owning a home and being you know trying to keep that all up with, with everything and That's having awesome. that low. It's amazing. What else do you know? Well the last was was uh, the budget and reserves and maybe Steve Ross to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just read through the 2018 2019 audits from the Capitol and overwhelmingly. Eden's or somewhere else? Others. Okay, others. There were 26 others. Okay. There 28. Two of them came within their budget. But the overwhelming findings they were with the reserves overfunded. Yeah. And a few of them were saying five years, ten years out, we went up on the Basically, one of the eight, three years, they felt it was reasonable. And they kept telling them, you're overfunding, you put that money back to the taxpayers, move it around, do something to us, alleviate the taxpayer burden. And that was an overwhelming theme of the um, Adjust your budget, make sure that when your budget comes through, it's more on task, that you don't have this unassigned fund balance at the end. Like we have been for just about ever, with over one million and two million dollars every year being then put back into reserves and blooding them. We've gone from two million dollars in reserves, I think, in 2015, and this is one million, I think we're up to 10 million, and that's not even counting four percent on the signed fund balance that you're able to give for emergency money. So it's quite massive what you get, what is in reserves. You know, that would be like you saying, I think you need 10 years worth of your electric for a year say it's unreasonable. Given 10 years of, of, of reserve is blooded. 
but even when I spoke to the comptroller department, they were like, well, 10 years is a little bit much. So Laura had said that that's what they recommend, but that's not what all of those, and I can give you a list of the schools from some of these. No, I'm not saying that's what the comptroller recommended. I said that the gap elimination adjustment lasted longer than three years. I'm saying that those reserves help to keep staff who normally doesn't decline, and we have a decline in state aid because the governor's pie, his whole piece of money that he's going to give for state aid to the entire state goes down. And everybody's small piece of that pie gets to be a lesser dollar. The reserves help so that the kids that are going through the educational process, they go through Eden Central School from pre-K to grade 12 to once. So if they go through and their senior year is four years where we're cutting staff and cutting staff and cutting staff because we have the tax cap and we really don't want to be spiking the taxpayers' um, property taxes. So we cut staff and they go through and there's nothing but bare bones. And then in year five, that piece of pie gets bigger and we get more state aid and we hire teachers back. That's wonderful. But those students, that those four years didn't have any resources, they're not going to come back and get those resources. They've now been turned out to the colleges, to the jobs, to the military. There is no second chance to come to the school. So I think the scary part, too, and this table may not on it, or maybe this table did, and I'm not sure, is that, and, and, and as a former special ed teacher, I, I want to be um, empathetic when I say that that we have more medically fragile students that we are obligated to educate than ever before in our history. And Sean can one day can come to Laura and say, this child's going to cost us $160,000 on an air-conditioned school bus with a nurse, with an aide, right? And we have, to, we have to send them out. And generally speaking, when we have a medically fragile child in one family, there's also another secondary special ed need as well. Well, if we have a half a million dollars left over at the end of the year, Sean can take it up in a week without even trying. There's a district not far from here in central New York that I was in a meeting with last week with Senator Galvan's office who said that they just got six students in, all special ed needs, all high, high needs, that because they can't expend more than their their budget is a, has been approved for, they will now, this coming month, be cutting staff that's not <coughs> special ed, that's not required, I know, right, to pay for the bills to the end of the school year, right? It doesn't matter what the revenue is, right? They can only spend what they can spend. You and I can go grab some money out of different places if we can't do that. But we got to roll, because we probably have some people in the audience. We really want to thank everybody for getting in on this one. If you have notes and you want to give them to Barb, Barb will decipher them.